Hello all, and after much delay, we have a seemingly very overdue pay-per-view review. Um, I pay-per-view review. Eh, pay-per-view review. Um, ROH's final battle. Um, I, I did re do a review, um, videotape to review, video to review, on Sunday, but not Sunday, on Saturday. Sunday for Christmas. On Saturday, and it didn't. It, it, I, I guess they videoed it wrong or something. I had technical difficulties, and it just didn't come out right. So, um, it was going to take three hours to upload. He didn't really need that. So, anyways, um, let's get on with this review. Um, I'll be honest, right off the bat, um, I didn't. I thought the pay per view was pretty much a complete letdown. I don't know that the pay per view was bad. I think the pay per view was good. Um, but I don't think it was great, um, and I think that Ring of Honor, every iPay-Per-View, every pay-per-view has to go out and put on a great to awesome show, um, and I think this show was, was very much a letdown, and I think that is not a good thing, because they didn't have a lot of momentum going into the show, and I think the show needed to deliver, and then it not delivering, um, was just that much worse because of that. Um, and there was there was a lot of reasons for that. I, I, I don't think there was a lot of... There wasn't really... I would say there was only one match on the show, well, two matches on the show, that I think weren't booked right um, as far as what happened in the ring. I think, But I do think everything, as far as story-wise, was booked about as well as you can, you can expect. Um, but I, I think... You saw the problem with the show, and, I, and I'll get well. I'll get to that when I get to that, because really, the main event was had a lot to do, I think, with a lot of the problems with this show. But um, let's get started. Let, let's go through, and I will, I will, I will get to my gripes with this pay per view. Um, we started with Michael Elgin and T.J. Perkins. This was good to as well. This was good. This was just a solid good. Um, match was a very good opener and um, was pretty much what you wanted. Um, it, it's kind of weird, you know, TJ Perkins isn't really on the TV a lot. Um, that's unfortunate because he's a guy that should be on TV a lot and should be utilized on TV a lot and, and really in this role where he's really good and he's great, but I think he's best used as he was here where he helps elevate guys, helps make guys look good. Um, Michael Elgin looks like he's going to get a pretty good push this next year, which I think is good. Um, I, I think he is something different and what kind of ring water needs. So I, I think that is a good thing. And I think having T.J. Perkins go out there and make him look good is a good thing. And I think T.J. Perkins could do that with a lot of guys. So I, I think that is – he's definitely something that they need. They probably actually need more guys, probably – one or two more guys like him, and they really don't have that right now. I think that's kind of part of the problem. And if you're going to on the TV, if you're going to have these long matches, um, instead of having some shorter matches with a long match, which you're just going to have two long matches, you're going to have an opener, which goes kind of long, and then the main event, which goes long. Um, if you're going to try to get guys over, then you need guys like TJ Perkins, who are good in the ring, who you can sell as, you know, um, very good guys who maybe don't always win, but are very good and very talented and people enjoy seeing. And I think TJ Perkins is that type of guy. So, very good match. Um, so, there we go there. Then we had um, Ciampa versus Jimmy Rave, the returning Jimmy Rave. And they did a really good job of <clears throat> explaining the story. I, I think the commentating, commentating all night I thought was, was great. But they, they did their jobs amazingly well, and, and it was good to see people. It was good to see a commentate. It was good to see commentators add something to the show instead of take something away or just be there. Um, it was nice to see them add to the storylines, remind you. I thought this match in particular, they did a good job of explaining, hey, Jimmy Ray used to be in the embassy, explain that whole thing. Um, that all said, this, is, this, is, this was a long show. And I don't necessarily don't mind long shows. I think Ring of Honor putting on four 
maybe just over four hour I pay per views. If it's Final Battle, is a good thing. I think if you do that every time out, and it's a bad thing, and um, they've kind of done that. I think that's bad. But I think if you just do it for Final Battle, um, I think that's okay. But given how long this show was, for one thing, and that's one of the big complaints people have. And the other thing is, is that I don't think this needed to be on the show. Um, this, this, this screamed of me kind of like what we see on TNA or used to see on TNA more, even, where let's try to get everybody on on the pay per view, and I don't like that. I, I think that the guys on the pay per views need to be the guys who should be on the pay per views, and that needs to be kind of a reward. I don't think Chomp is ready for that. I don't think you necessarily need to put a returning Jimmy Rave on the on the eye pay per view. I think you could have easily stuck him on, you know, a warm up match, um, you know, before the eye as, as a bonus for the the, the crowd that was there. Um, I, I think that would have been better, in my opinion. But um, yeah, this was a match that didn't even. That I said, this was a good match. Um, I'm saying that, and this was this was this was a pretty good match. So well, I shouldn't say pretty good. This was this was this was better than I expected. I, I guess I should say um, I'm not the biggest Jimmy Ray fan, but um, so I would say this is okay, They're pretty good. Um, but but it was it, it wasn't like it, it was horrible and didn't belong on the pay per view. But I just don't think the match itself set up. This, there was no setup to this. There was very little to it. So why have it on the pay per view? Really? There we go. Um, then we had the TV title match, um, Jay Lethal, uh, Mike Bennett, and El Generico. This was another good match. Um, went really short, but was probably what more of the matches needed to be. Um, didn't go very long, but was good. Um, Mar Maria came out with uh, Mike Bennett and was a perfect fit with him, I, I must say. Um, though the fan, you know, the fans chanting stuff at her um, was pretty funny, particularly the CM Punk's lucky seconds, that sort of thing. Um, but, but was, but was really good, um, a finish where, you know, Bennett pinned El Generico, a lot of people thought Bennett might come out of this with the TV title, and a lot of people were upset about that, but then, uh, Lethal immediately pinned Mike Bennett, so, there you go there, so, that was, that was a good match, and then we had probably the best match, the best moment, the best everything on the card, and, and really, going in the pay-per-view, I really did think that the Kevin Steen stuff should have been more of a focus. It was a focus on television, but they waited so long to focus on it that it this needed to come off more as the second most important thing on the pay-per-view. And the way they built it up was that you... Or I would even say this needed to be pushed as the most important thing on the pay-per-view above the, the world title, because the world title was pretty much a... came off as kind of an afterthought. This was the most important angle. This was all of that stuff. Um, now, I've seen a lot of people ex uh, really complain about this match. Now, I can see complaining about it, particularly once we get to the world tie the tag title match. That said, I have nothing wrong if you do a match like this every, you know, once a year. You do a match that was like this, a hardcore, brutal, guys going through tables sort of match. If you do it once a year... I am fine with. Um, I don't think you can blame a company if if the wrestlers refuse to protect themselves with head with chair shots. You can argue that maybe the chair shot shouldn't be there, but if the wrestlers aren't going to protect themselves from that, head, you know, and I'll get into that later too. But I really like the match. I thought the match was really good. Uh, st if, if you would have told me that when ECW died all those years ago, that it would be Steve Carino who would go out there and put on an ECW type match. And this is what this was. This was an old school ECW type match with storyline, everything. It was booked good. Every, you know, the, the announcers did a great job of explaining why Jimmy Jacobs wasn't trying to screw Kevin Steen. Um, they did a great job with everything. The guys went out there, busted their asses, worked their asses off, took, just killed themselves out there. So that was great. The ending segment with Steen and El Generico was great too. And wouldn't it be something within a year, I'm going to call it right now, next year, final battle, for the title, we have El Generico versus Kevin Steen. 
a year build of that. I, I definitely, definitely could see that. I definitely would like to see that. Then we have the intermission, um, which, you know, I definitely think, I understand why they put the intermissions there, but mm, I think they need to get rid of them. So, there you go. Uh, then we got the uh, Tag Gauntlet. This is another match that probably should have been gone, didn't need to be on the show. Um, especially, I, I think they needed to change it once uh, once they found out that Rhett Titus was hurt. I think they needed to change things. I think I really liked the way they did it, but you know, it started off just so good with Alexander and Coleman and the Vado brothers. Not that the guys aren't good, but I think that it would have been better to, like, for example, if you started off with the All Night Express and you had the All Night Express go through, and at some point in the match, Red Titus got hurt, and but they kept going through, and then maybe had the Young Bucks eventually beat the All Night Express the same way they did, and then the last match be. The last part of the match would be uh, Cole and O'Reilly, Future Shock, taking on the Young Bucks. I, I think it would have worked out a lot better. But the way they did it, you know, really this this could have easily been, you know, some sort of other type of match. Um, just a straight-up Young Bucks, all that Express match. Um, like I said, I, I'm sure the Rhett Titus injury changed a lot of this. But the match, but either way, the match came off extremely flat and was very, and seemed way too long and just, yeah, not, wasn't, yeah, not, and, and not that it wasn't good, but it was, it was just good, but it, at the same time, it was enjoyable, but it wasn't great, and a match like this, particularly how long it is, needs to kind of be great, and it just came off as kind of just pretty good, I would say. Um, then we had Roderick Strong taking on uh, Chris Hero. And returning Chris Hero, I would say that this that, that he's probably just returning for this one match. Um, and Strong and Hero just didn't click. Um, this was this was good, but nothing more than good. It was kind of underwhelming, particularly once Chris Hero came out. You'd expect them to be able to go go out there and put on a very good match. Um, you know, maybe maybe even a show stealing type match. But and, and they were given time, so it's not like they weren't given time to do that. But just kind of just didn't work. So. There we go. Then we had the tag title match. This match. Jesus, this match. This match was it was a match. This was this was this was booked all sorts of wrong. I don't know if they at the last minute had to change things because all night express were gonna be gone, I guess, for a while. But you know, Hoss and Benjamin came out and just started beating up the Briscoes. And the match really didn't start because they didn't ring the bell for like Ten minutes it seemed. Um, this went on forever. Um, crazy hit, chair shots to the head with Nigel McGuinness screaming at the guys to put up their hands. Screaming at the guys to put up their hands. This is why I don't think you can necessarily blame Ring of Honor for that. Now if it comes out down the road that they didn't do anything to any of these guys um, after this match, any type of disciplinary stuff, then yes, then you can blame Ring of Honor. But I think when I, I think it's it comes off very disingenuous. If you review the show and you and you've watched the show, and Nigel McGuinness is screaming at the top of his lungs that to put up your hands on commentary, um, that yeah, there's there's there, that these guys weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing, um, even even if they had were protecting themselves better with the chair shots, this just came off as what the hell is going on? Yes. Haas and Benjamin were going to be booed. Yes, they were going to be the heels. Jay and Mark were going to be the faces. You didn't necessarily need to turn Haas and Benjamin heels in this way. You could have just done it during the match. You could have you could have at least let them go on out there and, and do their thing. And it didn't need to be a long match. I mean, that's the thing. This could have been a 15-minute match. It didn't need to be 20, 30 minutes. This just could have been 15 minutes, go out there, let them do their stuff, let Jay and Mark win, be done with it. But that's not what we had happen. Um, I, I I really think this this just just was just like ugh. By the end of this, this just kept going and going and going and going and going. You were like, can we, you know, first of all, can we at least get it started? And then can it just, you know, it just came off very just. What the hell was going on? Um, not very good in my opinion at all. So there we go. Um, then we had the main event. Technically, main event was great. Um, unfortunately. 
after everything else that we'd seen, it didn't come off great. I would say it came off good. Um, this reminded me a lot of Joe and Angle at Lockdown in a match that I, I also didn't like, that I think a lot of people liked a lot better than me. Um, this went on for, I think, over 40 minutes. Didn't need to go over 40 minutes, particularly on a long show like this. This match, at most, at most needed to go 25. I would say you could have easily done a 20-minute match, this exact same match. Um, I think it would have been better because I think you would have been able to up the pace a little bit on it. Um, this is the, pretty much the exact same match they did the first time, except that you don't have the dynamic of what's going to happen. I mean, the, the thing about that match was that you had a lot of people wondering, okay, who was going to he turn heel? Was anyone going to turn heel? What exactly what we're going to get? Were we just going to get a straight up two guys trying to trying to go at each other? You had a lot of other things going on. In this match, you just had it, the match was built up kind of like an afterthought. Like, okay, well, we need a main event. We don't have a main event, so this is what we're going to do as the main event. And given that, and given that that's kind of the way I think a lot of people saw the main event, it didn't need to go more than, like I said, 25 minutes. I think doing that just, just made the show seem a lot longer. The show itself was, the match itself I thought was was great um, as far as that part of it, but it just came off just as like, been there, done this, yeah, whatever. Um, I think what they were trying to do and it just, you know, because we'd seen it before, it just didn't come off as good. And I think that's that's the one thing I would say about Davy Richards is that sometimes when he when him and somebody else do a rematch, it comes off much like the first match, and so it's just not as good and it loses a lot of its luster. Um, that all said, um, I, I think this brings back a point that I made before, which was was Davy Richards the right guy to have the title once TV started? I didn't think so, and I said even then I think you could build up. To Davy Richards getting the title here at Final Battle, which then, you know, with whoever, I mean, whoever you needed at the time, and, and that was part of the problem is who you put the title on. Um, and then have Kevin Steen, have him start cutting a promo, and then have Kevin Steen, which he did at the end, come out and, and cut his promo, and I think it would have been a lot more dynamic, and um, you would have had maybe, you know, a much more dynamic main event, and then a much more dynamic you know, leading up to it. Now, as I said, I, I thought this came off pretty flat, in my opinion, um, the match itself, but I thought that the that the Kevin Steen stuff came off very well, and I think Kevin Steen and, and, and Richards will have a pretty good match, and I think that the feud itself should be good. I think it'll be interesting um, once we get to it. We're not there yet, so we don't know exactly what they're going to do, but, but I definitely think that will be interesting. Um, as I said, I, I think everything on the show, booking-wise, led to something else. I think that, with the exception of how they booked the main event and how they booked that tag team championship match, which was just retarded, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I thought everything else was, was pretty good, and, and Steen and Carino was just, it is, is worth going out of your way and seeing, particularly if you like kind of more hardcore style matches. I don't know if you like a good hardcore style match, because that's what this was. When I, I've often said this, a match like this, you, a match like Steen and Carino, you have to bring the hate. They brought the hate, and this is what I mean when I say that. They they brought the hate, and when you do that, it adds a level to a match like this that just makes it that much better. So that was really, that was really good. But you know, th this again, there wasn't a lot of hype going into this show. I I would be shocked. I don't know what the numbers are yet. Which, which pretty much, I think that says something. Um, that, you know, they, they led up, you know, with TV, they, they did this, they did this where we got a lot of treading of water, where a lot of what the diehards had already seen, we were seeing again, and then at the same time they were trying to do these same angles with, to, with new fans, and we don't know how that came off. If it didn't come off, if new fans didn't order this iPay-per-view, then I think it shows that they need to take the TV in a different direction. And when I say that, what I mean is just, but I don't really think the TV needs, is I think it needs a different, um, how, uh, format, I would say, where 
maybe two shorter matches per show where you do squashes or do, you know, you know, quick 10 minute matches, maybe, um, two like 10 minute matches and then a long in a bit. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. And I think that way, because one of the problems I've had watching the show is that I don't think enough guys are on the show. Um, I think that is what needs to be addressed. Now, how do you do that when you're taping, you know, four shows back to back? I don't know. Maybe you do more tag matches. Maybe you do more six man matches. But there definitely needs to be an emphasis on putting, getting more guys on the shows and getting them on the shows more regularly, particularly the top guys. I, I think you're, t- you know, when they when they do the next set of tapings, in whatever way, Kevin Steen and Davy Richards need to be on every show. Even if they're just doing promos, if they're doing one, those two guys need to be on every show. Um, the Briscoes need to be on every show. We need more, you know, video packages of the Briscoes doing like what they do on YouTube, where they cut, you know, not the long promos, but maybe shorten down those promos to like, you know, have them do 30 minute 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 promos that do the same thing, or or just show them cutting the the promos which have gotten them over so much on the internet. Um, you know, on just about every show, um, you know, those guys, the guys you want to build your company around, they need to be in some way, shape, or form on every show, even if it's promos or whatever, um, because I really think that's one of the problems. And also, you need, as I said, you need to get more guys on the shows just so people are familiar with who they are. And, you know, it on an one hour show, how do you do that? Mm, I'm not sure. But you do have enough time. I mean, the next IP reviews aren't going to be, which they announced, aren't going to be till uh, the WrestleMania shows. So if they have time to build guys up. But I definitely think they need. There needs to be more of an emphasis on trying to get as many guys on the TV show as possible, as opposed to what I think we saw here on the IP review, where they tried to get as many guys on the IP review as possible. I don't think. You know, I think, my opinion, put it the least amount of guys on the iPay-per-view as possible, so it seems like the guys that are on the iPay-per-view, well, these are the big stars, these are the, these are the big things we build up to, you know, a couple of matches, not a couple, but, you know, um, six to seven matches, um, that way, if you want them all to be long, they can be long, and you're not having four-hour, you know, pay-per-views on pay-per-views that don't need to be four hours. Final battle, mm, that can be four hours, because you're supposed to be building up all year to that show. But, you know, just a normal iPay-per-view should be, you know, three hours. Maybe even less. I mean, the Ch- um, Chikara's High Noon was, what, two and a half hours and was, was fine. Was, was 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 better than this show. Flowed better than this show. So, you know, I, I, think, I think that's something that definitely needs to be changed. And hopefully they change it. Hopefully... You know, but we'll have to wait and see at the next set of tapings exactly what happens. But um, that's definitely something I think needs to happen. Of course, you also had, and I completely forgot about this, you also had a lot of the production issues, um, particularly the trying to do the uh, replays, which came off horribly. Um, you know, I, I would like to see some better production, particularly now that they're owned by somebody else. But, you know, if, if you've read anything about. Sinclair, you, you know that they're not big on spending a lot of money on things, so, unfortunately, so, eh, there's that, but, um, yeah, that, that would be, you know, I, I, you know, those are just things that need to be changed, in my opinion, um, and another thing I would say is, you know, I, which we're kind of already seeing, is, you know, the, and I think this is another thing that hurts Ring of Honor, is, how do you do the iPay-per-views, the, the, the TV, and then still do the house shows and make sure the house shows and the DVD tapings still mean something? And I think, and I, you know, a lot of people have been upset because the DVDs seem to be on the back burner. And I'm fine with that because, to me, the DVD market is dead. And unless they're going to find some way to get, you know, on Netflix or, or, or get some other way to, to get their, you know, those shows... Um, and, you know, distributed in another way other than DVDs, then, yeah, the DVDs being on the back burner, to me, are fine. Um, because, I, you know, I, I think you're getting to the point where, you know, people want those shows to mean something, and I, I think you can still make them mean something, but at the same time, 
um, it needs to be more about seeing the guys alive than um, than simply uh, you know being at a DVD taping or being at a at a at a show that is important. That's my that's me personally. Um, I just think I just don't think there's a way to make every single you know make the eye paper you seem important, make the TV taping seem important, and make the DVD tapings seem important. I don't think there's any way to do that and not burn out a crowd or not burn out your fan base because you're going to start seeing the same matches over and over again. And eventually you're going to have to start putting, having like B-level main events on the DVDs because you need to save those for the TV and for, you know, the A-level main events for the TV and for the iPad reviews. And so, you know, so that, that's another issue that I think Ring of Honor has to face. But um, I definitely think, you know, like I said, I think the, the IP did its job as far as, as setting up for, you know, future shows. But at the same time, I, I think, and I think it was structured good. And really, the first half was, was excellent. The second half of the IP review was just not. And some of it was, was definitely, you know, putting on matches that shouldn't have been there. The Gauntlet match. Um, Madge is probably under delivering strong and, and, and hero, definitely. And then you just had, you know, booking matches completely wrong. And I think that that's, that, that's, that's all on Ring Monitor's head. So, there we go. I've, I, I've rambled about this enough, but if I was, you know, 7.25, yeah, you know, I think, I, I, I think I'm giving it a lower score than just about anybody else. I think Nightmare may be giving it a, uh, 7.252, but that's pretty much all I would say, um, it's a good pay per view. I definitely recommend I pay per view for, you know, for fifteen bucks. Eh, you know, the Steen and Carino matches. It, it is worth checking out for that. It's not a great show. Um, definitely, uh, you know, probably final. From what I hear, I haven't seen it yet. The Final Gate sounds like it was a much better show in Japan. So, and eventually I will watch that and maybe actually do a review of it. Imagine that. Anyways, um, I am out. Have a good one. Later.